Welcome back everyone, I am the Depressed Eeyore and this is Limbus Company. So, we got this now. And what are you even doing? I don't get why they attack each other. They fight attack, blah blah blah. Yeah, no clue. Well, in any case, um, let's go ahead and get some of this going. Deal with that. Want you to deal with that. This is just what five, seven, nine. You can deal with that. Don't care about that. And the rest of this can go and just clean house. Definitely should have just focused on this guy. That's okay. Hello, Aeolies. Alright then. Okay. You can deal with that one. God, that's a lot. B3. It'll be a tie if he gets the coin flip. That's gonna suck. There's not much I can do about it. Okay, I see. I remember now. Alright, we're gonna do this, plus this, and just pray. Alright, and then everything else can go after this guy. Alright, we may take a nasty hit here. Unless I can get the stagger in. We do! Alright, we just need to endure this hit while we hit the shell, because it's while it's broken and you actually do fatal damage. Alright. 
plus some more events. Alright, you guys do that. You can take care of that. So that's 16, so 8 to 12. So yeah, literally, it will require a full on tie there. That's 9, 13, 17. Good luck, I guess. You can deal with that. Actually, you can handle this. And, oh, good, I can do it this way. There we go, problem solved. It looks like you're dominating all that, so we can just do all this and be good to go. Alright, got the parts we need, supposedly. According to Virgilius, the people at the boatworks have been saving up for a trip back to Vicor's back streets where their fixer office used to be. After experiencing a warp train malfunction, uh, they apparently decided they'd rather take the car. I consider telling them that the truth I learned from a number of identities, but I figured ignorance is bliss and kept my figurative mouth shut. Maybe I fear that the things I said could bring bad results again. Like how Ishmael has fallen out with me. Come on, get working. Oh, we've got him now. Phew, looks like our job's done. Unlucky you. The tide is in. You should be able to set off now. Now then, switch to boat mode. Oh, it transforms thusly then. I've got to say, I have great admiration for whoever designed this vehicle. I heard it's stories of it, but to see it in motion firsthand. If you tried, it could most certainly change into other forms, as long as the core is intact. How can such a core be real? I'm just amazed, for lack of a better term. Indeed, Faust is amazing. Alright now, get in your vehicle. You can switch the mode again once you're in the water. Aboard the now boat-shaped Mephistopheles, we forged ahead into ever-rising waters. Our relationship with Ishmael was still precarious, which was something I still wasn't sure what to do about. But since some of the centers were also trying to be supportive towards Ishmael, I decided that it would be best if I tried to come up with a solution in the meantime. Maybe I'll find out more the further we get from the shores of the Great Lake. Hmm, mm, it's sailing all right. Does that mean we get paid and go out for a meal now? We actually got our, pay our money a minute ago. As soon as we fulfilled our end of the contract, a delivery fixer from the D Devat, uh, Deviat uh, Association came by and paid us the remainder. Oh! Our contractor contractor per turned out to be a pretty big deal, huh? Hot damn, now that's a catch. How about we take a break from the trash crabs and splurge for some pork? Pork belly barbecue. Sounds good, Big Sis. <laughs> By the way, Mika. Yes? Uh, 
Uh, when did we add a submersible mode to the modifications? We, uh, didn't. The ship looks like it's listing. Oi! Get the, get the water out, quick! Buckets! Where are the buckets? I have found a hole. This must be... T. D. <laughs> We're off. We're off. Club, club. <sighs> I'll get the lifeboat. Guess we should also prepare to pony up penalty fees. <laughs> We're so screwed. And then we all die, DM. Do I click again? Then. With our frantic attempts to drain the bus and Karen's skillful row rowing, we managed to get back to the boat works and have the bus repaired. With that, our voyage on the Great Lake began somehow in earnest. And there we go. So that was C. I believe we've done these other ones, right? No, we haven't, have we? Rooms past the back door. Will you enter rooms past the back door? Sure. I don't remember if I've read this or not. I hereby confirm today's close the bus uh, of business with the centers. Whether we're riding the bus through a forest or navigating the bus boat over a vast lake, our da daily routine changes very little. Thank you kindly. Starting now, you will you will be given a maximum of 12 hours to partake in sleep and rest. Duration is subject to change. Have a good night. The usual hubbub followed by the usual usually idleness. I guess I'm not the only one starting to enjoy these normal routine days. It wasn't by ch our choice, though. By now, I thought we'd be sailing vigorously across the waters toward the Labarmicor branch located somewhere within Yukor. But here we are, unable to leave the coastal si uh, side of the Great Lake, dawdling and twiddling our thumbs. Well, it's not like there's been an accident. While Faust didn't elaborate, she explained that we had to wait for now. If I were to hazard a guess, we were waiting here to complete some kind of entry procedure like we did at k -Core. Either that, or we're waiting for someone, probably the before team, to get in touch with us. Which brings us here, surrounded by nothing but endless, endless water. The centers chattered about inane subjects before complaining about the, this immense boredom. But deep down, we were all exhausted from the unending onslaught of physical, physically and emotionally draining happenings. Deep down, we all knew these leisurely days would not last. So we each selected to enjoy this brief maritime respite in our own ways. If thou needest mine assistance, as I have repeatedly made myself clear, I am quite alright. Thy countenance returning the contents within thy stomach to the lake with such vigor saith otherwise. Except for Yi Seng, who had a surprisingly low tolerance for seasickness. This voyage was prov proving to be rather uneventful. Yi Seng, the day's over. You can go back to your room now. Oh, shall I be finally be freed from this suffering? Seriously, I told you that you could rest in your room if that if you wanted. Our fellows must, must also have th their share of suffering. I cannot, in good faith. Seek comfort only for, for them for myself. You're the one with the biggest share of suffering right now. While I wish that he'd be more reasonable with himself, I could see where he was coming from. I thought better of it than to try convince, to convince him otherwise. Instead, I chose to help Yi Sang to his room. I thank you, Dante. Then, until later. I waved at him and watched until he stumbled into his room and closed the door behind him. Then I shall 
Seek myself for spite as well. Manager, in man manager Esquire. Yeah, rest well. Don Quixote walked into the same door that Yi Sang had walked into, but I could, I, I could get a blurry glimpse into her room over her shoulder. I couldn't get a good look at it, but it was certainly not the same room Yi Sang had walked into. I see these doors every day, but I still don't get it. I should probably be used to this by now, but it's still pretty fascinating how the, the rooms change based on who opened the doors. I turned, leaving their, their shut door behind, ready to return to my room. There's a door immediately to the right side of the, that dem demarcation of the corridor that we're not allowed to cross. Within that door is a space somewhat different from the center's rooms. And there were the wooden door to my room and the metal door leading into the mirror dungeons. The doors leading to the Luxcavation dungeons and the recently opened door to the Refraction r Railway also come into view. Wow, it's even pointing out all the mini games. No new doors, yet. For no reason in particular, I creak those doors open and take a quick peek inside to see if anything changed. Well, I've never actually managed to catch any changes myself, but who knows? Maybe I'll notice something worth keeping to myself, which I should probably report to Faust. Something must have caught, caught wind of my rather mischievous thought. An ear-splitting siren blares all the way here from the other end of the bus. Blimey, what the hell is... Oh boy, this again. M.E. Kill the volume. I spun around to face the other side of the corridor. The centers, alarmed by the noise, were one by one peeking out of the rooms. They were used to this siren by now, but they didn't change but that didn't change the unpleasant fact fact that their sweet private hours were disturbed. Well met, Dante. Let us observe this disturbance together. Uh, okay. I accompanied Faust to the helm. She filled it with a few buttons and shut off the alarm. Inco incomprehensible. Complicated looking letters began to fill the round screen. Is that a new room? Even Faust needs a moment to decipher. Right, right. The siren always comes without warning, and with it appeared the mirror dungeons, the luxcavation dungeons, and the refraction railways. I don't know if it's relevant, but I didn't see anything that would indicate activity when I checked the railway door earlier. It is unlikely that anything new would appear from that entrance. I find it difficult to believe that the next line would arrive so soon when the glow of the door leading to line 2 has yet to go out. I guess you're right. The first rail really took me by surprise when it appeared. A new door had appeared before us, its edges shimmering with a blue glow, and when we entered it, a mysterious vehicle was just sitting there, waiting for us. Its appearance somewhat resembled that of Mephistopheles, but it was also patently clear that I'd never seen anything like it before. An odd feeling. I see that your first encounter with the train has left a strong impression, Dante. Well, I recall that you had a rather violent reaction when I entered the, uh, entered the train to observe its interiors. Come on, I wasn't the only one that freaked out. Everyone did. What if that thing left the station before the rest of us got on? Was that was what I wanted to say to Faust? Hadn't if Faust hadn't already turned around uh, around from the screen to which her eyes had been metaphorically glued for a while and walked away. This wasn't it then. No, this particular vi volatility is not something we can utilize. Right, I thought it was an awkward time for a new door to appear. Too soon, too soon. The dungeons and the railroads railways appeared at awkward times as well. Dante, I recommend that you refrain from set settling into a premature conclusion. A new variable may present itself at any moment. Moreover, if this volatility has triggered an alarm in Mephistopheles' Mephistopheles' engine, then it naturally follows that a new door has appeared at, at an indeterminate location down the corridor. This may reveal a space uh, from which one could never return. It is best that we keep track of these incidents. Even Heathcliff won't do anything like that again. Probably. As per my last advice to you, my premature conclusion is... Regardless, no serious issues have been detected at this moment. It would be most apt that we enjoy our remaining rest period. Now, if you'll excuse me, rest well, Dante. With those as her parting words, Faust disappeared into her room in her usual manner. Left alone again on this bus. Boat. I looked at the numerous letters and displayed on the screen. 
numbers, un unintelligible letters, drawings and symbols depicting something. I had to shake my clock head after staring at that dizzying sight for a while. I wonder if this is how you sang felt earlier. I'm star starting to feel nauseous. I was barely able to hold back the vertigo from setting in. Time to saunter back to my room. Let's turn in early tonight. So I believe that was for the the second refraction world, which I never, I didn't, I think I couldn't even access it because I wasn't far enough in the story. But I also I had no intention of doing it anyway because I don't actually I like doing refraction real ray. It's just it takes too long. Um, and then there's a thing for the first Walpurgis Nights. Let's see. Oh, sure, we'll go ahead and knock that out and then we'll be ready for um, chapter 5 next time. Hopefully this won't take too long. Another day, another prolonged and dreary period of waiting, waiting, and some more waiting for something to happen. Of course, our bus boat was still floating on the coastal Great Lake. Voices of discontent among the sinners started small, but they were growing increasingly incessant as of late. Oh, actually, I think I had access to line two. I just didn't do it. Gah! Holy crap! All of a sudden, an ear-splitting siren echoes through the, throughout the cabins. It's that alarm again, warning us of the volatility of Mephistopheles, but it was much louder much, and uh, much more painful than the ones that we've heard before. And this time, it wasn't the only thing that, was, that assaults our senses. Huh? We never had these flashing lights uh, like this before, right? Also, I think we may have read this before because this is part of the wall progress, which we did do a little bit of. So if, it is, if this is a repeat, I apologize. What is it this time? The hell did you feed this bloody rick rickety bus? Ooh, this must be the, the signal that the long-awaited adventure is finally nigh. It, it, is this what we've been waiting for this whole time? No. Regalius frowned as though he sensed that something was off. He turned to Faust. It was one of those rare occasions when I could sense the slightest hint of confusion from him. Wee woo, wee woo. Mephi's blaring and crying. Mephi sick? What is this, Miss Faust? I wasn't informed about a siren like this before. First, a correction of falsehoods is in order. Mephistopheles is not bloody rickety and eating is not a part of its behaviors. It does make infrequent use of the encephalence supply gear installed in the engine for fuel, but that is an, of no negative consequence. Even if it was, whatever issue that may arise can handily be repaired after a proper total disassembly. That was just a figure of speech, duh. So what's this now? Sounds like this bus is about to explode. To label Mephistopheles as some bloody rickety bus completely disregards the amount of pain and effort Faust dedicated to designing and... Heathcliff, if you don't take it back, I don't think she's ever going to stop. Ah, uh, seriously? Yeah, Heath, take it back. The bus might actually blow up before she explains everything. Uh, I take back what I said earlier. I cannot comprehend what you are attempting to take back. A rather abstract reference to this unknown concept that you supposedly mentioned earlier is hardly clar clarifying. Anyway, allow me to list the spef specifications of screws used in Mephistopheles' construction that makes make this creation so impressive. First, fine, I take back what I said about the bus. It's not bloody rickety and it doesn't eat. I'm sorry, alright? The cabin briefly echoes with his cries, then a brief silence. I think I saw Faust flash the briefest grin of satisfaction. Good. Is the clown show over? This juvenile tedious exchange is testing my patience. Yeah, it's a bit different from the usual alarms. Don't think this one's a for a new door. It is quite simple. The night is here. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I, I recognize that one. T-O-I-S-Y-N-C Talk talk, or I snap your... Well, progress night is here, it seems. The night is not here. That is very apparent, at least in this coastal area. The name does not re refer to the time of day in which the sun moves beyond our line of sight. Hmm. Then it appears to me that by that de designation you are referring to a certain phenomenon. 
These things seem to be doing a little better now that the waves had died down somewhat. I am indeed. I am certain that all of you are most familiar with the fact that extracting identities in EGO from mirror worlds is one of the, the many functions of Mephistopheles engine. But its reach is rather limited. Even as it expan has expanded over our journey, we have yet to reach mirror worlds that are too far from our own. Is this the Golden Bow's doing? I noticed that it was fishing out more and more new things the longer our journey went on. Broadly speaking, yes, you could say that. Dante and our collective experiences gradually expand our range of extractions. Normally, extractions require a certain resource, but there were times when the identity cards appeared out of nowhere. Do you recall them, Dante? Uh, yeah. Some of them just randomly popped out of the engine. Wait, wait, slow down. The hell's an identity card? Oh, you still don't know. I'm... Hmm, I'm jealous of you, Heathcliff. You have a talent of ignoring anything you don't care about. Are you looking to get your head smashed in, or what? Right, right, knock it off, you guys. Guide buds giving us the evil eye. There, you know, the, uh, things manager bud pulls out of the engine from time to time. Those little rectangular objects with our alternative world. Wait, was it a mirror? Was it mirror worlds? Anyway, it's those things that with depictions of our other selves on them. Yes, the things that look like mahjong tiles. I thought they look a bit like wafers. I believe their de de denomination comes from their appearance as cards that contain identities. That's it, thus, it naturally follows that they are named identity cards. So, we're using those rectangular toys to transform us into our alternate selves. I never used them before. That's because I'm the one using them. Also, I don't ever use you, Heathcliff. On the device issued to Dante are indentations through which identity cards and EGOs can be inserted. They are reflected when we participate in battle. Oh, so that's what they were fidgeting with before every fight. I could tell from his flabbergasted expression that none of the other, none of it had ever occurred to Heathcliff. On the other hand, Don Quixote wore a somewhat forlorn expression. What's wrong, Don Quixote? Well, I... Is this not about time when Ishmael should, would intrude upon this conversation and denounce Heathcliff with biting words such as, You still didn't know? Th that's just like you. This emptiness weighs heavily upon my, my heart. Oh, you're right. Something was missing from this whole convo, I knew it. You're right, daft bastards. Enough. We're not getting the information we need. Ms. Faust, please explain the present situation. What are these green lights? Understood. If we take into account the case of identity uh, cards that Dante received without spending any lunacy, we can draw a conclusion that Mephistopheles' discretion has an element of unpredictability t tied to its uncertainty. The hell is she blathering about now? Yet this item is of your design. To say that it is an element of unpredictability would inca indicate that. Correct. Ekaflin fuels the engine. Yes. However, extractions and reconstructions fuel utilize chaos. Well, in easier terms, you can say it uses the concept of possibilities itself as fuel. Our extraction range grows when we are able to clearly observe specific possibilities in the inf infinitely branching minor worlds. During this peri period, however, the borders between the mirror realities are entirely sat shattered. Using the present as our anchoring point, it w could be said that our current extraction range is approximately three years to the past or the future. During the Walpurgis Nights, however, that range grows to about ten years or even more. In that case, thou me meanest to say that identities uh, of prominent fixtures from times past may grace us with. Theoretically speaking, yes. But each Walpurgis Night has its own peculiarities. It will not let us reach into all potential poss possibilities. Then does that does that mean we may also be availed our alternate selves as the legendary fixer, the Ark Magnificence, the one and only R R Red Mist? That is extremely unlikely, but I will not completely dismiss the possibility. The extended range, I suppose, could be defined by worlds affected by entities that were indispensable to the formation of this current state of the world. For example, that would be the Lobotomy Corporation headquarters prior to White Knight's and Dark Days incident. In some ways, your words sometimes find a roundabout way to, to the truth, Don Quixote. I didn't know who this Red Mist was, nor did I know that White Knights and Dark Days what White Knights and Dark Days was. 
but I could hazard a guess that they both must have been pretty significant, considering that Vergilius's face grew visibly tense as soon as they mentioned that they were mentioned. The centers were unsettled too. We can conclude that this siren is no cause for an immediate concern, then. No, it isn't. Consider it a festival that arrives once in a while, for now. Festival, festival, festive times. Karen is festive too. I don't know if I got all that, but this isn't what we've been waiting for, is it? No, we will continue to wait. <sighs> the center sighed and groaned with disappointment as the newfound anticipation fizzled. Well, something did happen, but it wasn't something that would get us moving. I could see what a disappointment this might uh, be to them. So, how do we stop that green light from flashing? It will turn itself off when Dante extracts something from the engine. Do not worry. Right, back to business all. Dante, extract something and turn that alarm off. W-A-D. We'll just be running more dungeons to the back door when, with whatever new thing they pull anyway. This, uh, still, this leisure leadness is a rare opportunity, isn't it? Bless, bless be the patient ones, or so it is said. Every sinner says their piece before returning to their seats. Some of them walk out of the cabin to gaze at the lake. It's something they must be growing a tad tired of doing at this point. Maybe they're just going out for a long sigh. And Otis walked up to me. Are you not worried, executive manager? Huh? About what that mad scientist said, for now. There has to be more, more to that statement. Should I investigate this matter further? Otis was right. Was While Faust did tell us to consider this nothing more than a festival that arrives but once in a while, she definitely knew more than she was letting on. But if Faust speaks of something in her characteristically cryptic manner, it means that she'll never tell us until she wants to. Well, it does bother me a little, but right now we don't have a lot of options. Let's put a pin in it for now. Otis nodded, affirmatively, bowed, and returned to our seat. Well, let's get extracting, like Faust said. So this was when you can get the uh, the magic bullet and all that stuff, which I already got. All right, so with that, we are finally at chapter five. I don't even know how many chapters there are anymore. I'm pretty sure it's five, because I can't even access line three right now. All right, so with all that said and done, I am the depressed Eeyore with the Zimbus Company. I'll see you guys later.